So welcome everyone to this 4D Barn webinar. Uh, we do our work and, uh, and also these webinars with the hashtag dairy happiness. And today we talk about handling of cows, what kind of uh, uh, elements you need in your robot barn for efficient handling. Uh, thank you for keeping your microphones and cameras off during the presentation. Uh, but after, after that, we have time for questions and answers, and then you are free to open your mic and, and say, your, say your questions out loud for everyone. So let's see what will happen in the next uh, 30, 45 minutes or so. Uh, handling of cows uh, in a robot barn differs from, from other milking systems. Uh, in a robot barn, normally, we do not handle a big group of cows, like uh, 30 to 50 cows in, in, in one, one, at the one time, but we more commonly have, have individual cows that we take from one place to another or do some, something for them, or we have a small group of cows, maybe two to four cows. And uh, in this webinar, uh, you will see in practice what kind of cow handling situations there are in a robot barn and, and how the working flows there. Uh, we go to Makela's farm and also the Rastilati farm. We see some videos and, uh, and in the end, I'd like to ask your permission to tell you a little about the 4D barns. Quite new great way to improve your handling skills uh, and that is a uh, handling cows in a robot barn course we also have a unique offer about that but but let's let's look at that in the end and like i said many times already there is a uh, questions uh, time for questions and answers in the end so use the chat whenever you want and in the end it's it's okay to just raise hand and open a mic and, and ask your question Yes, chat is here if you wanna wanna see it. Uh, first few words about us for the barn. Um, um, how how can you say it? Simply, we we design barns. That's that is what we do. Uh, but we have a unique way of of doing it. We don't don't just deliver layouts, even though people want layout a layout and and they need a layout, of course, to build a new build a barn or renovate the existing one or other building like calf houses or, or facilities for heifers. Um, we coach farmers. Uh, we want um, farmers to learn how to use the building and really think about the management. So when we start working together with our customers, we always start from the, the everyday working routines. And quite often these handling situations are really the ones that need a lot of thinking. And, and they uh, determine the, actually the layout also. So that is, that is the main, main way of, of working. First, think about the, the management, how to do the work, where to do it, different kind of handling tasks and all the other stuff like um, bedding or, or manual removal or calf management. Uh, these kind of things we, we talk in the beginning and then we create the layout that fits it. And then we create um, working instructions. So the farmer will really get instructions how to use kind of the manual of the barn, how to use it. We work globally. Uh, a lot of our work is concentrated in Northern Europe, but we also also work in, in North America, and we have quite many projects in Japan too. Our work is based on science, which is really the core value of 4D Barn. Uh, we do also our own surveys and studies and follow really closely the scientific world. So that is, that is important to us. And we like the idea of bringing the, 
the scientific results to everyday, everyday, everyday life and everyday working in a barn. Uh, my name is Virpi Kurgela. I'm a veterinarian. Uh, I started my career as a practicing vet, general practitioner, doing everything from um, um, guinea pigs and hamsters to, to horses. Uh, but then I started to more and more concentrate on, on dairy farms and dairy cows, and, uh, and then to larger scale dairy farms with robotic milking. Uh, farms have, dairy farms have, uh, have milked with robots in Finland from the early 2000s. So we have more than 20 years of experience in them here. Uh, in Body Barn, my responsibilities are, of course, uh, focused on cow welfare and health. But this, we work as a team, and that is the really big strong point of 4D Barn that we have really uh, a wide, wide range of expertise in our team. We have an architect, we have uh, agronomists uh, and, uh, and me as a veterinarian, also our Japanese team, there, there are two veterinarians there. And uh, David Kamel is our specialist in USA, Wisconsin. And he, he brings to our team decades of really experience working with the large dairy farms in the US. So in this kind of team, the ideas and all the aspects of, of uh, uh, managing dairy is, is really brought into the table and into discussion. And, and that is one of, the, one of the strong points of 4D Barn. And of course, then we take the customer in and, and add in his or her experiences. Uh, now we go to today's subject. Um, the thing is that all the handling tasks take time. And uh, actually what we have seen, because we do these kind of, we call them boosted visits to the farm. So we go there early in the morning when people start working in the, in the dairy barn and uh, and we measure the labor time and do all kind of observations there. And, uh, and we have seen <laughs> that uh, chasing, quite often handling means before the handling situation, you have to chase the cow around the barn in a worst, worst case scenario. And, and we have seen that, that farms easily can spend like half an hour, 45 minutes trying to do something with cows. Uh, it says here that planning these uh, handling situations carefully is a key to stress-free and efficient working. And what I mean by efficient is, is that one person is able to do the tasks and do them safely so that there are no injuries to, to people or cows. And... Uh, and also, I think the working should be relaxed. That's important too. So nobody's, no cows or, or people, blood pressure rises while doing these tasks. These are the five most common handling situations in a robot barn. They are very simple, normal. Everybody knows that these things happen. Uh, but the thing, really the key is to to plan these and, and think about them, how to, do, how to do them in a robot farm. Fetching cows, I don't know how well you know the, the word fetching or what does it mean, but uh, I'll explain shortly. In every robot farm, there are cows that are not showing up voluntarily to the milking as often as they should. Um, and that has really nothing to do about the, the cow traffic, the general cow traffic. Is it, is it guided or is it free traffic or, or some kind of combination of those two? So what we have seen is that in every barn there are fetch cows. Uh, in a good situation, there might be only maybe a cow or no cows at all. Uh, 
But if there's, a, for example, a breakdown in a, in a robot in this milking system, then there might be 15 cows to fetch. And you all have you you have to get to all of them from the free stars to the to the milking. Uh, but later on in this presentation, I will show you really in detail how fetching is done easily. But a little bit more about fetching. Um, like I said, handling cows takes time. And when you when we think about fetching, it depends on two things. One thing is how many cows you have to fetch. Uh, and the other one is how long it takes to fetch an individual cow. And here are examples of three farms. They all have robotic milking. I'm sorry, this is a little bit small, but anyway, uh, here you can see that this farm one, it uses about five minutes. So here are the time used for fetching all those cows. Use about five minutes to fetching uh, nine cows. So th this free robot farm has nine cows to fetch that this morning and it uses about five minutes to get them to the fetch pen. Then, then there's a farm number two and they have 11 cows to fetch, which is a little bit on the upper um, side of the scale. So really we recommend that uh, you only have one to two, really maximum three of fetch cows per robot. That is a quite good rule of thumb. Uh, so this one has 11 and, and it takes um, nine and a half minutes to fetch those, those uh, 11 cows to the, to the fetch pen. And here we have third farm and the fetching takes almost an hour, 53 minutes. And the number of fetch cows is here. You can see here's the number of fetch cows and it's 32. So from this example, you can see that the variation is really big. And, and I, I just checked our boosted data, the data we get from the farms where we visit and, and really the, when you look at the the cows, for example, they can be a farm. I mean, farms, for example, they can be a, a farm with one hundred and thirty cows in milk, and there's only from zero to two cows to fetch in the morning in that one hundred and thirty cow pen. But then there are farms that have fifteen percent of the cows are fetch cows, and that is something that really can pile up the working time. So both things are important, how many cows you have and how, many how much time you use per cow to get it fetched. Uh, I don't know if you are familiar with the, with the uh, fetch rate, what does it mean? But fetch rate is, uh, it's a number of fetch cows, uh, divided by number of all cows in the milk. So it's, a, it's a, how many percent of the cows you have in the pen uh, you have to fetch to milking. And it looks like in, in our data, the average is around 8% of the cows have to be fetched. But the good farms uh, with good management and, um, and good good cow flow around robots, it can really be just a percent or two. But that is something that uh, you should think about on your farm or with your customers. We have a lot of veterinarians and advisors here today. So, so ask your, your farmers how many, how many fetch cows you have, what is your fetch rate, and is it, is it reasonable? Uh, then the moving on cows is very important part of uh, handling cows. Like whatever you are doing, you have to move cows around. Uh, and those movements are most involved, that, or they involve individual cows. But there are also situations where you move small group of cows. Those kind of uh, situations that uh, involve moving our cows are pay, pen changes, um, 
from May milking cow pen to, for example, to a pen where cows are dried off, or from far off, dry cow pen to a close up BIC pen. If you want to proof trim your uh, a group of cows before trying off, those cows has to be fetched from the main milking cow pen and they must be taken to the handling chute. In all these tasks and also daily tasks like, like fetching, it's very important to take account the, the cow's point of view and, and her behavior too. So it's not just this efficient working is not just people's point of view, but but actually taking the cow's motivation and uh, and mindset into account too. So it's much it makes uh, the fetching or whatever task you are doing efficient. Of course, we have health checks. We have to medicate some cows. Uh, and in these tasks, one special things, thing is that the cow's behavior can be unpredict unpredictable because they are sick, obviously. So taking account of your workers' safety here is really, really important. Fourth, uh, very common handling situation is hoof trimming. And what I want to remind you all is that a lame cow is an emergency, always. But in a robot barn, it's kind of more emergency case uh, than in other kinds of milking. Because in a robot barn, the cow really needs her all four legs to voluntarily stay up or get up from the stall, go to the feed bunk and go to the milking. And if a cow is lame, you can quite uh, quickly find her in the in the fetch cow list uh, from your robot computer. So I think it's very important that you make sure that all your employees spot also the early signs of lameness, and uh, and all your veterinarians and and advisors. You should teach your uh, educate your your customers to find the lame cows before they show up to that list. And always treat these lame cows quickly. Um, I would consider uh, lameness as big emergency as, for example, a milk fever. So nobody waits if, if there's a lame, I mean, if there's a cow in milk fever, nobody waits for a, um, for a, half a day or two days let's see if it gets better <laughs> no one does that it, it, it sounds crazy if you do that after the carving if there are or uh, around carving if there are any signs of milk fever the cow is cold a little bit shivering whatever of course you give the calcium bolus instantly you want to treat it instantly and it's the same thing with with the lame cow whenever you find any any signs, then immediately take the cow to the handling chute and check the check the um, hooves. Okay, inseminations obviously a, a daily task um, and should be really planned well because this happens so frequently. So this should be like easy peasy. So, doing these everyday chores efficiently and stress-free, it requires good, a good plan. So you have to think beforehand. If you haven't thought about it and you have your, you have your barn ready, so uh, just take the layout and start look at it, looking at it and thinking how really things should be arranged there so that it's what are the roads and, and what be the how how where you do it and, and how do how to do it there has to be a designated place to do the handling task so that everyone knows where it's done and it's kind of a place that is safe 
and uh, safe port for people and cows. And then you have to create a routing to that place with, and there you need gates. Let's see how everything is done in practice. Now we go to Mäkelä's farm. It's located in Kalajoki in, in Western Finland. Uh, they worked with us a few years ago and they retrofitted and expanded their barn. They used to have a milking parlor and now they have uh, three robots there. They started with two and then added the third one last year. So, how, how does the one working shift look like in this barn? They start by checking, oops, by checking the VIC cows. Then they walk to the barn computer. There's a small barn office here. They check what this um, computer has to say about the cows. Then they go to the main milking cow pen and fetch cows that haven't showed up to the milking. They also do other tasks in that ma main milking cow pen, maintain stalls, do health checks, clean waterers, things like that. Then it's time for medical treatments and those cows who need some kind of medical attention, they are always in that special needs pen. They are in one place, so it's easy to treat them. And the last task, in that working shift is washing the robots. And all this takes about one hour and 25 minutes for them. Next, I'm gonna show a video from that farm uh, from the beginning of the work shift. And because I was told that my sound might be a little bit blurry when the video is going on, so I'll try to keep quiet that time. So they start their working shift by checking the transition cows. Actually, the, the big, big office is, is from the other end of the, the barn. So they actually walk, start from there and they walk uh, the, uh, the feed alley uh, through the whole barn. So that is the first like quick glimpse what is happening in the barn. And then they look more carefully the and the VIC cows, and then they go to the farm computer. And from the, the computer, they get valuable information about the cows, like the, which cows are in heat, because there's activity monitoring there, and health of the cows. They have um, collars with the rumination detectors, so, so that tells a lot. And they have these wonderful uh, sticky notes. I know some farms write things in their hands, but uh, I think this is pretty good. Uh, some people use like uh, their phones or things like that, but this is quite common, I guess. Uh, they write down the, the cows that need handling. So what are those cows? Which cows need handling? This is a quite... It's a quite big list uh, of course, sick cows, the cows that have calved, lame ones, like I already said, cows in heat, cows that have to be dried off. Normally this is not done every day, but it's, it's part of the weekly routine. We have fertility and pregnancy checks, also weekly or monthly routine. And this is fetch cows, cows with too long milking interval. And how do you find those cows? I think it's very important that you don't only rely on the computer, but you also observe the cows. That is very important. And, and bringing those two things, like your own eyes and your knowledge about your cows, and then, then your, what your computer has seen, uh, you add those together, and there you get a list of cows for your post-it or, or post -it note sticky note. Um, 
when you look at the list of your fetch cows, really, like I said, one to two fetch cows per robot is a good number. Then you know that you are really on the safe side. And for those cows too, there should be a kind of always a reason why. Is it a, a, a fresh heifer that has just come from the VIC pen to the press cow VIC pen to the main milky cow pen so that it's a little, little bit lost or or is it a late lactation cow which doesn't have so much milk anymore and that, that's why it doesn't get really anything any concentrates from the robot or not much so it's not it's not it's not motivated to go there or some or just some kind of sickness or lameness or something like that in the car so slow num uh, low number of cows and uh, always a reason for every cow uh, your ro robot computer settings you can adjust it but uh, when we ask our our boosted when we we pay those early morning visits to the to the farms and uh, and measure their labor time and other things there. We also ask what are the settings for for fetch cow. And quite often people say it's 12 hours. So if there's more than 12 hours from the last milking, but it can change. Uh, first, for fresh cows, it can be less than 10, 10 uh, 12 hours. It can be something like 12, 12, 10, something, sometimes eight. And for late lactation cows, it can be more. So it depends. That, but the 12 hours is most common. Okay, now let's go to the fetching. So, how does it go? This is their barn. They they start by, by closing this gate. They start looking for the fetch cows. And when they pass this cross alley, they close this gate, start looking for more cows to be fetched, keep them in front of them, or they... They go straight to this alley. And here, another cross alley, close the gate, then around to the other alley. And from there, when, when cows have passed and person is passing this, uh, this alley, you can open this gate, but always keep the cows in front of you. And in the end, they end up here to the fetch. Important points here are gating. And for example, here you have to have easy access for people. That is important. You don't have to open any gates. There was a man passed there. He opens the gate to the fetch pen and creates a road with that lift up gate and starts to look for cows. Is there one? Nope, no, that wasn't. But there's a one. And her other is full. So she really needs to go to milking. And from that yellow sticky note, he looks for another cow, numbers of other cows. And then closing the, the cross alley gate, and continuing fetching. And like you see, the other cows don't really care about him being there and fetching cows. The others do whatever they are doing. They are on the feed bank or in the stalls, but, but uh, I mean, they don't really care about, care about him working there. Okay, now we are here. These gates are closed and he goes to the other alley and keeps the cows in front of him and opens these gates and takes cows to the fetch pen. And 
And as you can see, all is relaxed and easy. Here's one. He opens this gate because all the fetch cows are in front of him already. And then when all the cows, the last cows are in the fetch pen now, it seems there are four fetch cows. And like I said, there are three milking units in this in this barn, so four fetch pen in, in one shift is, is quite okay number. For this producer in Magilla Farm, uh, fetching takes uh, one minute and 10 seconds per cow, according our boosted, boosted measurements. We have actually measured working times, uh, working working times in more than 70 farms now. And um, this Makela farm, farm is one of them. So fetch pen is not just any pen. You can use it for other things too than just getting cows to be milked, those ones who are reluctant to go there by themselves. Uh, but how to design a fetch pen and uh, how to use it, uh, that is quite a long story and you could really have a, a whole, whole webinar about that. So let's look at the other handling situations. Fresh cow checks, obviously in the headlocks, but there are still some farms who think that they are not necessary. But uh, uh, as being a vet, I, I really, really think uh, headlocks are essential part of, of any robot barn. You can do handling in stalls too, if the cows are calm, like here, uh, in, her, her, in his sticky note, <laughs> there was this cow's number and uh, there was actually low rumination for this cow. And, uh, and that's why he wanted to check the temperature. For it. And the cow, cow seems to be really relaxed, so it's easy to do it there. Medications in a headlock. This is not really the safest place to do it. You can do it here, and quite many farms do it, but this is not really the, the most, most safest place. Uh, it helps if you have other cows to the next headlocks so they are they are some cows that are all locked that helps to keep the cow that it doesn't move so much but still there is room for and especially room for kicking and uh, movement and especially if you go to the other then this might i wouldn't recommend using this and that's why uh, having the Having the handling suit close, then it's that would be really beneficial and more safe. Headlocks are good if you want to give something, uh, feed cows with something. For example, here he's uh, trenching or giving the cow some medicine per orally. And once again, he does this task by himself. So he doesn't need anyone to help him with this one. So hoof trimming. This is from Rassi Lati Farm. They trim all the cows that, that are dried off. And uh, he does the trimming himself. So he, he has the list of cows. He goes to the main milking cow pen, finds the cows that are 
uh, try it off, and uh, and then he he does the hoofs and and takes them to this try off pen. It's that's so that he can do it by himself. It's very important that the routing to the handling suit is well well planned. That is very important. You cannot do it if if the cows don't. Uh, of course, they they are not always so willing to go there, but but the routing is really the key. And actually, if you have a fetch pen and handling suit close to each other and a good good uh, roads from one to another, then getting cows into this is really easy. The handling suit is not just for hoof trimming. Uh, uh, it's also for other kind of tasks like medications. Uh, it's very important that you can get cows in and out from it very easily, and uh, and also the design of the area around the handling suit must be planned carefully. Really, you have to think where are your your equipment for handling whatever handling you are doing there, and and also is the handling suit that kind the kind that you can do everything there. So there are many kinds of handling suits and, and when you are choosing the one for your farm, think about what you're gonna do in it and can you do those things in it. Inseminations in a robot barn, they, they are often, and it's most convenient to do them in headlocks and that doesn't really differ from any other kind of milking systems. Uh, what you have to think is where is your equipment? So where do you get your get your insemination equipment that they are close and easy easy to get? So those were the most common but handling tasks in in a robot. But there are many other handling situations, and they take place every day in a in a robot barn. And you must remember that when you are planning to have a milking robot in your barn, you have to remember that, that the robots help you with milking. And I must say they do a pretty good job. They, they are really good. They milk cows perfectly and really well. But there are many other tasks that those robots don't do. They only do the milking. So you need to think about the other handling situations. And when you plan everything nicely, uh, your cows are calm and you are calm. So there's no high, high blood pressure for anyone in the barn. So managing cows is easy and stress-free. Here is an example of a hoof bath. And uh, that hoof bath is located after the robot, not too close and it's part of the traffic around the robots. So when cow gets out of the robot, it has time to eat, and then when it exits the area, it goes through the food bar. And as you can see, it does it really relaxed way. And actually, this is a perfect way of food bathing because, you know, it's, it's actually manure is coming out after the food bath, not into the food bath. And that is because it's relaxed and, and everything is easy there. And, and that needs smart design. When you design things smartly, it really helps to reduce the stress and make barn more labor, labor efficient. And that's really like the really crucial point for us in 4D barn. We really wanna, wanna make it happen. Every, every work happen in a stress-free and but efficient way. For easy handling, you got to have handling skills, of course, for your personnel. You have to have good routing. I've said that so many times, but one thing I haven't said that you need also good roads for pe people who work there. So not only for the cows, but also for people. Different roads than the ones that cows are using. You need a fetch pen, headlocks, handling suit, and of course, gates. So, those are the main things for easy and uh, efficient handling. 
And now this is a good question for everyone. Is handling cows easy in your barn or your client's barn? Uh, especially veterinarians, we are often there when the handling, when, when you have to handle cows when you are there. And I'm sure you have seen different kind of situations. And uh, if, if it's not easy, then you should do some rethinking or the, or the farmer should do some rethinking and, and start planning a better roads and handling facilities. Like I said, we design barns and those projects, when we design barns, we always want to prioritize easy, stress-free and safe handling. And the truth is that at the moment, maybe the dairy business, like any business, is, is not blooming at the moment. Uh, it's not a perfect time for big investments. And that is happening in Finland. Uh, prices are high for, for new bars and uh, any equipment. Uh, and, and that's what we have heard in many other parts of the world too. But it's good good time to invest your, your knowledge and improve your daily skills. And you can do that in a 4D barn E Academy. And today I explained some things about handling cows and how to do it and what you need for it. But this, this is not enough time to, to cover it all. So we have created a course called Handling Cows in a Robot Barn. And you can find it, find it in our web shop, and our website. And there you have the best information available. Actually, having this... Um, uh, or getting this course is really, uh, could really, if if you feel like uh, you don't you don't like it, which I which I really don't think, but but if you get this this feeling after after purchasing it, then you have seven days money back guarantee. So if there's if there's anything anything you you can return it to us, and that that we have here because we really trust that this course is full of valuable information. Uh, we have all these nine module, modules in there. We talk about how to move cows around, how to look the barn with the cow's eyes. We explain the fetch pen uh, and how to design it in a way that it is efficient and good. We talk about handling suits how to place it, how to make the routing to it, uh, how to use headlocks in a good way. Uh, we have ideas from the farms we have seen. And then we, in one model, we have testimonials from the farms, how they use this uh, fetch pen, how they use handling suit, how they use headlocks in their everyday cattle handling. And then in the the last module is where it's kind of most interesting because there you can uh, design your own kind of design your own barn. What kind of handling equipment or what kind of things you want to do in in your barn and what kind of handling places? So, so that is really really important that you kind of have already started to think about how to handle cows in your barn. But now it's time for questions. Do you have? I think there is some. Let me try to get there. Do you have any questions? Is there any opinions or experiences you would like to share with me and the audience? Just lift your hand or open your microphone. It would be nice to hear, hear your comments about this. So, hello, I'm Jouni Pitkrant and I'm, I'm from hello. 41. Hello. <laughs> and if there are any questions, uh, I know that there uh, there are some veterinarians. Maybe I would ask from you if you any, anybody would comment that what do you what, what do you see that what are the most like like ch challenges in challenging situ situations in robot bonds? Because uh, definitely quite many of you are working in a, in a robot bond. So would you would you have some comments or, or thoughts about that?
anybody? <laughs> <laughs> no, my colleagues want to want to keep. Okay, how about how about anyone else? Uh, what I have seen is this kind of chasing around. When there are no gates, then people kind of run run after cows and try to get them to somewhere. Is it a headlock or or is it a handling shoot? And the other thing I have seen a lot is that in many tasks you need two people to. So if you want to take a cow to a handling suit, you have to wait, call for someone and wait for him or her to come and help. That is something that I've seen quite a lot. Yeah, this working working safety is something and uh, it, it, it's becoming more important because we try to design the bars in such a way that one person can mm -hmm. handle animals and because if because and if there's only one person working in the barn, it needs to be and it must be very safe because sometimes if something happens, uh, then uh, uh, there's not any other people to come to help. So I, I think mm -hmm. this people safety and worker safety is, is also becoming higher priority. And also in some some areas, I think it's also something where the legislation is coming to be more strict. So if you are if you if you have employees, you need to give your employees uh, to uh, like like a safe working environment. Absolutely. Yep. Well, if you haven't any other questions, so ah, thank you. Here, here, can I ask a question? What do Please you recommend? Do. What do you recommend for cows that are in heat? as far as bothering other cows in the barn do you mm -hmm. sort those out and do you what do you recommend for drying off high producing cows do you create a separate area in the barn for those cows thank you for those questions uh those are actually uh first about the cows in heat it was quite an eye opener for us when we started to time lapse video uh, nighttime barns so in those boosted visits, we don't only go there early in the morning, which is night for me. I hate early mornings, but we go there the day before or in the evening and we install time lapse cameras and they uh, film the, the barn the whole night. And there we when we did the first ones, we really saw that wow what is happening in front of the robots? Because quite often that is the place where, where there's a lot of room there and there are, there's the space and then there are cows waiting to go to the robots a few cows so what is happening there there it's like they're running not running around but some cows, cows chase others and uh, they then we were able to see that yes those that we didn't know that but when the, we looked at those videos together with the farms they said ah that cow was in heat and that cow was in heat and they make really a uh, I don't know some kind of party there in front of the front of the robot, and they are really disturbing the cows that are trying to get into the robot. And that's why we really recommend taking those cows away from the main milking cow pen. And that's that's for that reason you need a, a special needs pen where you can take those cows. And of course, there are many cows that it's difficult to see the signs of heat of, and, and you are looking for it and you can't see it and uh, those cows you don't need to take away but but those cows that have this kind of crazy heat absolutely take them away from the the main milking cow pen they are disturbing the cows trying to get in milking and also those ones are lying in the, in the stars the other question was was about trying off and i know there are many uh, at least two two different ways of doing that uh, uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a world, in dairy world. Some do it uh, abruptly, is that the word? Like just phew, they, one day they decide this the cow is ready for, for uh, trying off and then they take do whatever is needed, for example, the hoof trimming and they put in the dry cow tubes and then they take it to the far off dry cow pen. Uh, and the other system, which is widely used here in Finland, is that you gradually dry off a cow. And if you do that gradual drying off, then you need a pen, a separate pen for those cows, because you need to milk them. 
for example, if your drying off day is, is Monday, then in the Sunday evening you take them to the dry, dry cow pen or trying off cow pen, not dry cow pen, trying off cow pen, where there are cows that are dried off. And they are there until Monday evening, you milk them, then you take them back there, and then you milk them again on Wednesday, for example. And then if it's needed, if they still have uh, too much milk, uh, let's say 12, 15 kilos still, then you milk them one more time, and then they are dried off. So that's that's the most common way we do it here. And for that, absolutely, you need a, a designated pen because those cows, they cannot eat the, the ratio that it, the, the, the milking cows have. So they are normally uh, having or eating the tri cow ratio or PMR. And they, that, that's help, that helps to try them off. And I think this is an ex excellent example about the way how we do design is that we need to we need to first know the uh, the management so that we can design the proper proper barn for that purpose. Mm. Yeah. Uh, there's a quest question or comment from uh, Lina Masai Tiene from uh, Lithuania and, and about the picture with the veterinary doctor and, and in my opinion I wouldn't stand like he did so I think that we have like some very maybe dangerous <laughs> example picture in the presentation so we need to check that <laughs> out. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah well. Ah uh, you mean yes uh, another, another one. Uh, the uh, yes, not the yes, not the one that was doing the job, but the other one who, who was, I think, uh, st uh, uh, standing or sitting on a on a <laughs> dangerous spot. You are right. There were yeah. many of us taking photo photos there, photo shooting. Thank you for for that. Maybe I make some kind of cross yeah. there. Um, okay, and these are um, there are these GPS. Paula. Paula pointed out that there are these GPS positioning systems. Mm. And that is true. Um, in a smaller farms, you notice that when, sorry to say this, uh, <laughs> I should be gender neutral, but normally it's the other gender, not this gender, but the other gender or many of the others. But anyway, uh, the, the male <laughs> persons, when they are in the barn, they cannot find the cows, but then, or it doesn't really matter if it's a male or female, but anyone, the one who is not always with the cows, they know somehow where the cows are, or this cow is with that cow, and when you find that cow, you can also find this cow, and, and these, they, they more, more or less know. But when you have bigger pens with, for example, you have a three milking robot in one pen, then there starts to be so many cows, and it's difficult for people to know where they are, and these GPS, Positioning systems are really a good tool. Uh, do you, Paula, have this kind of system in your farm? Uh, yes, we have. Okay, and I'm I'm very happy with them. And <laughs> without, without them, it would take a much longer time to find the cows. Exactly. Yeah. And I have staff in the barn, so mm. I usually don't fetch the cows. I fetch or check only the sick cows. So mm. it's really, really, it's a good investment. I wouldn't be without it. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> so I uh, just a comment. Yeah, but that, that's very good because one thing is to find the cow. That is the, I mean, first you have to find it, then you have to take it to wherever you want to take it. So those are two different things. And if you can find the cow, it can take really, and that has happened too, yes, many times to me that, that people just don't find the cow. They just keep looking and looking and looking and the, you know, the blood pressure goes up and up and up. So yes, you can spend a lot of time in that. So these kind of systems help. Yeah, and there's a uh, question for Robin Kenis. If we need a separate pen for cows that are in heat, how do we create cow separating and access to the robot in combination mm. with EIC group? Yo, that is mm. for you. <laughs> well, I think this, this is something, this is, this is just all about the design. Mm -hmm. So, of course, the question, the, the question what we talk during the design phase with the farmers that do we actually do we do we have this automatic separating uh, sorting of, of cows uh, uh, so that there's a sorting area where at the nighttime uh, cow, cows are being sorted. Do we have it or not? Uh, uh, and and the other question, the thing is that we, we always can have like uh, 
uh, like uh, sorting sortings uh, to three uh, directions, for example. That that is one tool what we do. And of course, the most common thing is that if we have VIC group in a barn and uh, uh, there there are uh, like maybe minimum two robots, then we typically use this another robot for VIC cows, and then this other another robot is mostly for those cows what we need to sort and which are like like treated cows and those are like special special cows. So that's that's one way we do it. But it's about the design. How do we locate all those things yes but that is the question like like you said that is something that you really need to talk with your with your clients or we talk with our clients so you you have to think about in your part what cause you want to separate taking the smaller pen when and and then make it easier to treat them and handle them Okay, but if this was all, our time is more or less up. We have used one hour with this very interesting subject. Thank you so much for showing up, uh, coming and uh, stay tuned uh, with our other webinars uh, in our social media. And uh, so you learn them when they are coming. We are planning another uh, webinars. There will be actually a questionnaire. Uh, it will be sent to you after I think two minutes, <laughs> you will get it. And uh, please, there is one, one place uh, where you can write down what you wish from us, what kind of webinars you, you would like to hear. And um, we are really glad to, to have more of these and uh, about subjects that you are interested in. And in that same questionnaire, you can tell us how, how did we do today? <laughs> So now it's time to time to go to webshop and, and get this handling course and fully understand handling cars in a robot bar. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a nice day. Thank you.